the greatest benefit to inclusive and shared knowledge. I think it has to be the sense that that knowledge goes into an internet that's there for everyone on equal footing with everyone else. And that each of us should have the ability to write to and read from that internet without much interference from government or business or anyone else. And of course, the greatest challenge is the fear that that's going away if it's not already gone. Uh, I was thinking about a talk I heard Jonathan Rosenberg give about his book, The New Digital Age. He'd gone to Myanmar uh, to research, do research for the book, and, and Myanmar had just emerged from a pretty brutal dictatorship, and about 1% of the population had internet access. But what he found as he traveled through the country, that he, even in the most remote sustenance farming village up in the hills, that people had heard of the internet, Everyone had heard of the internet and everyone associated it with a more or less Western ideal of freedom of access to information and civil liberties. Uh, not a dictator's firewall, not a corporation's walled garden, but a free and open internet. And I think that's amazing. And I think that's a real testimony to the foundational vision of the World Wide Web and the internet. We have, what, 3.4 billion people online now, and another 5 billion soon to join us. What kind of an internet is going to be there in four, five, ten years uh, for all of us on Earth? Will we be able to con create and consume in an open and inclusive way? Uh, it could be so, but we've got a lot of work to do.